Hello, my name is Jason O, and welcome to my episode recap for episodes 1 and 2 of Noragami Aragoto. Those episodes are titled, Bearing a Posthumous Name and One of Her Memories. And so if you haven't checked it out already, I did a Noragami Season 1 review on my channel. Link in this video somewhere, uh, either in the card section or link in the description down below. Check that out if you want to. But as for Season 2, pretty decent start so far. This is the adaptation of the Bishamon arc of the manga, and very nice start from there. Uh, Yato and Yukine are in some trouble. Trouble, it seems, uh, especially with one of their friends, Suzaha, who got himself into trouble as well, and definitely a uh, mission period, I would say, for Hiori and our trio here, uh, how they will be remembered, how they want to be remembered, and you know, different things going on, Yato being used, again, Nora being involved in Season 2, as usual, Yato and Bishima looking for Yato as well, trying to kill him for getting revenge. Uh, from a long time ago after uh, he killed her, uh, Shinki, a very long time ago, it seems like back when he was his old self, but now he's his newer self, but still hiding from Bishamon a little bit, still haven't really figured out a good relationship just yet. When we episode 1, bearing a posthumous name, we start off exactly with that. Bishamon was having a nightmare about the time Yato did kill her Shinki, and she's been under a lot of stress lately. We see her, you know, waking up from bed, you know, distraught, uh, very stressed out from many different things, you know, having a bunch of Shinki around. It's very nice, you know, she's doing a very nice thing for the lost souls, finding them a home. However, it's really putting on a lot of stress on her, having her possibly have blights, maybe? That was a big thing in the second episode. But definitely a lot of Shinky is good for badass terror sense. You know, the action sequences in the Bishamon uh, fight battle that she had was very cool, but it does put a lot of stress on the um, god themselves, and so a lot of stress that Bishamon's been um, a lot lately. However, our trio, Yato, Yukine, and Hiyori, take on a phantom that's been causing trouble on a baby and his mother, caused by the baby playing with his reflection, and we do see a mask that we see Nora have uh, left at the scene, so definitely something implanted by her, and you know, she's you know, pulling all the strings trying to get things done her way, uh, the way she wants them done, using people to her um, betterments uh, to get Yato closer to her. The scene we have in the middle of the episode was of Yukine. We figure out that he's at an eighth grade uh, level school wise, at least. You know, his knowledge is at an eighth grade level. So Hiyori uh, figured that she probably had illicit sexual relations with Yukine back in season one. She's very embarrassed about that. And Yato acted like he's the adult in the room. Some very funny things there. Uh, again, Bishamo, I mentioned the badass battle that she went through uh, when she's going on patrol, looking for lost souls, finding a home uh, with them, with her in a huge mansion. We see everyone else, you know, most of them don't really do anything I guess you know some of them are just forgotten and you know she doesn't really say their names much for battle they're just there just to be there for a home uh, most like just little kids especially is very uh, troubling if you look deeper into that you know what kind of trouble these kids got into to get themselves killed and you know short life that they lived and now they get to live a new life uh, in a new place but well, maybe not so ideal for some uh, like Suzaha, who does meet Yukine, a new friend for Yukine, uh, who does find who does find out that he's a Shinki for Bishamon. It's also having all these Shinki around her house and her mansion makes it hard for her to keep track of everyone, especially for Kazuma as well. That's when we figure out that in the second episode, that Kugaha, the doctor, uh, pretty much of the whole entire household, meets up with Nora. They may have plans at least to use Yato against Bishamo, and so they have some things going on. Kugaha has his own. Um, ambitions or plans to take out Bishamon and to probably take out Yato as well at the same time, but it's mostly Nora's plan, I guess, to use Yato for her own uh, sake, and so very interesting things going on here. Uh, Yukine does have a serious conversation with Yato, telling him that he finally made a friend, uh, so a very funny thing there. Uh, Kofuku loves every second of it, and so that's the best parts of Kofuku in that little scene there, of uh, Yukine telling Yato that he finally made a friend. Friend and Suzaha, uh, they're working on a cherry blossom tree, and they talk about his backstory a little bit. How he met with this girl, who's like a 51st date situation, where every time they meet in the summertime, she always forgets about him. And you know, obviously, maybe that's just because he's a spirit, and she maybe she can't uh, fully remember him at times. He doesn't really care about that. I think secretly he does, obviously, uh, and he just wants her to remember at least the cherry blossom tree. This has been going on for over 30 years. She has not returned uh, for a very long time, and so he's still has that hope that she will someday return. However, Kugaha does come in, uh, sort of in 
embedding that sort of fear and doubt onto uh, Suzaha, telling him that you know, she'll probably never come back. She's already dead. She, you know, she won't remember you and stuff like that there. And losing his hope, Suzaha just is uh, frozen pretty much, leaving uh, all these dogs and these demons or whatever to kill Suzaha. And that's where a big mystery will have there. Even Bishima, she felt the effects of it. She didn't really know why at first, but then she realized that Suzaha is the one missing from the mansion. You know, she... Uh, doesn't really know him at first, and that's what Suzaha was sort of talking about uh, when he was talking with Yukine, how he missed that Bishamo didn't really call his name that much. You know, she has so many uh, Shinki in the mansion, however, she only calls upon a few of them at a time, and especially during certain situations, not really all the time. And so that's what Suzaha was really uh, doubting himself with, and that's what led to his death funny moment was with Hiyori and Yato. They, I guess they tweet each other, they DM each other. Uh, that's how they text, I guess. I don't know. That's just pretty weird. Weird, weird Twitter mention. I don't know why. I don't think there's any like, product placements in this anime, but it felt like it's in that little moment there. But it's still pretty funny, uh, though, however. The important thing, though, in the end of the episode was Kazuma noticing a blight on Bishimo. It turns out that Kugaha sort of implanted that sort of like a false per se, the trick Kazuma into calling everyone up and having everyone be inspected to see if they have any uh, blights on them, any sort of evidence that they're hurting uh, Bishimo. And so that instills more doubts on everyone to whether they want to trust Kazuma or not. You know, sort of accusing them of be hurting Bishimo. And that really is part of Kugaha's master plan. You know, sort of inkling the steps and all that. Even Kugaha confronted Yato trying to do the same thing he did to Suzuha. That obviously doesn't work, but still it kind of gets in on his, on his skin a little a little bit where he talks about how he's closer to the near shore and that he might disappear from this world and Yato was denying that as long as someone remembers him and you know he thinks of Hiyori about that you know he had a conversation with Yukine before about whether Hiyori would someday forget about them like the girl forgot about Suzuha would that ever happen as Hiyori girls goes older you know they would stay the same age but would they still remember her you know is she just is, are they just imaginary friends to Hiyori when she is older and so that's very much a fear into Yukine and Yato it's like another reason why Yato wants to have a shrine for people to remember him so that he won't just Appear, we won't get closer to the near shore. And so lots of things to come for season two, lots more darker themes we're seeing here, especially from Kugaha instilling the doubts and fear onto our characters, Bishamon, you know, for a dark past and sort of trying to get over that, but still really can't. Yasa, of course, he has a dark past as well. That's going to come up later on, I'm assuming, especially with Nora around. And so lots of cool things are doing here in season two. For Ray and both of these episodes an 8 out of 10. Really enjoy these episodes. Uh, the comedic moments uh, were kind of hit and miss a little bit. You know, just weird moments, especially with uh, Hiyori and Yato tweeting each other. Uh, it's cute, but still, it's kind of weird at the same time there. And, you know, darker is not always better, but for this series, I think it is getting better, at least the darker moments that the series is going through. And so, very curious on that. There's this um, other, like, pink purple haired girl around Bishamon's mansion. You know, I'm curious what she has plans. We don't even know her name just yet. So very curious on that. Kugaha seems to be the main antagonist as um, Nora as well. She seems to be the more uh, central antagonist for the series. So very curious on that. Bishimo and Yato have yet to meet each other. And so I'm curious if Bishimo will go to Kofuku like she did in season one. So very curious on what's going to happen next and how the sort of direction of the series is going to go and what sort of storylines we'll keep going into for our characters. What are your thoughts and opinions on both these episodes? Put all those in the comment section down below. Don't forget to rate this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Also, share this video as well. It really helped me out, so I really appreciate that. Thank you for watching my episode recap for episodes 1 and 2 of Noragami Aragoto. Those episodes are titled, Bearing a Post-Humanist Name and One of Her Memories. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.